Bubba Wallace is getting a new crew chief. Connor Jones gets suspended a race by NASCAR. And Bowman Gray is getting concrete walls. Welcome back to Break Hard. I'm Matt. Today is Wednesday. Thankfully, we don't have to hear those terrible Geico commercials with the camel talking about hump day, which got played incessantly during NASCAR broadcast. If you've been watching for the last decade. Uh, I'm sure you remember those. To get into today's actual news, though, Bubba Wallace will have a new crew chief in 2025 as Booty Barker will call his last race for the team at Phoenix in, what, a little bit over a week's time. In his time with Bubba Wallace, they've accumulated two wins, the first win for 2311 racing at Talladega in 2021. They won at Kansas in 2022, and they made the playoffs in 2023. But this season, it's felt like there's just been something missing there for that 23 car. While they've watched their teammate have a banner year and go race for a championship at Phoenix, the 23 team did not qualify for the playoffs. And while they've had speed at times, they haven't been able to capitalize on that, and they haven't had that sustained um, speed that you would like to see, especially not what the 45 has had. Now going into 2025, their plans kind of remain up in the air. They are committed to racing, of course, whether they get a charter or not, and their ongoing litigation against NASCAR. They could possibly be a three-car team as well, and it feels like it was probably the right time to make a move. Booty Barker will remain with the team in a competition leadership position within 2311 at their airspeed, their version of a NASCAR Cup Series shop for 2025 and and beyond, but he will no longer be the crew chief. Instead, the guy sitting atop the pit box for Bubba Wallace in 2024 will be Charles Denneke, who is currently the crew chief of Christian Eckes in the truck series, that number 19 truck, which has had an absolute banner year. He's accumulated seven wins with Eckes over the last two seasons. He has nine truck series wins in total, including uh, Sam Mayer's win at Bristol a few years back, as well as Chase Elliott uh, on top of that. This year alone, they won the regular season championship in 2024. They should be racing for a championship at Phoenix if everything goes correctly on Friday night uh, in Martinsville. And Eckes has been the definition of consistent this year. He's only finished outside of the top 10 one time this season, and they've had 21 races. If this was a uh, full season points championship, Christian Eckes would be sitting really, really nice right now. But for Bubba Wallace, I think he's getting a really good crew chief, an up and comer who very much knows how to get speed out of race cars, race trucks in this situation. I know some people are going to be like, oh, making the jump from the truck series to the cup series is going to be a lot, and it is, but we saw Rudy Fugel do just that when he went from Kyle Busch Motorsports in the truck series, jumped up to the NASCAR Cup Series with William Byron, and now they've had really good success uh, together over the last few seasons. So I don't think that anybody should look at what Charles Zinnecke has done and been like, I don't think he deserves to be here because he does. And yeah, are there going to be growing pains? Maybe, maybe not. Maybe there's going to come out of the box at Daytona next year and be really fast off the truck. Who knows? I mean, it is a super speedway, so kind of expect them to be uh, contenders there, especially with Bubba behind the wheel. But I'm sure people will have negative things to say about Bubba Wallace. He doesn't deserve to be here. You know, everything and anything under the sun about it. But this is a positive move for him. Charles will also be the third crew chief for Bubba Wallace at 2311 Racing since joining that team in 2021. Mike Wheeler started off 2021 as his crew chief and then was replaced with eight races left in the season with Booty Barker, who has remained in that position up until, well, the end of the 2024 season now when Charles will take over in 2025. Wheeler always seemed like a, a bit of a, we talk about nepotism sometimes in racing. It very much felt like a favor from Denny to put him into that position uh, because I don't think anybody ever saw success coming out of that pairing. Uh, the Booty Barker signing was another kind of a random you know, crew chief assignment there, but it actually worked out pretty well. They won their race with, you know, together at Talladega, moved on, and now we'll get to see what Charles can do uh, in 2025 with that 23 team. NASCAR announced on Wednesday in their penalty report, which typically comes out on Tuesday, but came out on Wednesday this week, which is pretty standard. It happens from time to time that Connor Jones has been suspended for one race this Friday night's race at Martinsville. He was originally scheduled to drive that number 66 truck for Thor Sport. He will now be replaced by Johnny Sauter, who was actually supposed to to drive the 16 truck for Hattori. No word on who's going to drive that truck. But NASCAR suspended Connor Jones for his actions during the Saturday NASCAR Truck Series race at Homestead when he intentionally wrecked Matt Mills going into turn three and four, turned Matt Mills sideways. He got into the wall, uh, caught on fire, had to spend two nights in the hospital. Connor went on a tirade over the radio, as we talked about before, like an entitled, uh, spoiled child, and then got parked by NASCAR for two laps after the race, said something stupid, put out a statement that didn't seem very genuine at all, in my opinion, and now NASCAR has decided to suspend him for Friday night's race at Martinsville, which I think is very much the correct thing to do. NASCAR has been very consistent over the last 
three years about intentionally wrecking somebody at a speedway race. They suspended Bubba Wallace in 2022 for doing it. They suspended Chase Elliott in 2023 for doing it. And those are just examples of why Connor Jones has been suspended for doing it this season as well. I know some people are going to be like, well, why wasn't Lane Riggs suspended at Nashville? And obviously all of these are very much, you know, case by case basis because not every intentional wreck is going to be the same. And I would argue that what Lane did at Nashville wasn't as egregious as what um, Connor Jones did uh, at, at Miami at Homestead. And then Connor's comments over the radio afterwards didn't help his case out at all. Lane Riggs, you know, got into Stephen Parsons. He backed the truck into the wall on the right side, but it didn't end his day. And then Lane was parked for two laps and sent back out onto the racetrack. Some people will also go ahead and say that Daniel Hemrick drove through the three car of Austin Dillon and intentionally wrecked him at Las Vegas. I don't think it was intentionally wrecking. I just don't think he hit his marks is what it kind of came down to uh, there. But I am glad that NASCAR did this. Uh, Connor Jones very much strike me, strikes me as a kid that would scream in the aisles at Target as a kid until he got what he wanted and everybody else in the entire store is annoyed while his parents just kind of ignored what was happening there. And somebody has to eventually tell him, no, you can't do that. And I'm glad that NASCAR is doing that in this situation here because like I said before, it's always been about like, oh, the garage will police itself. Mm, not necessarily because a lot of guys don't want to take on the monetary fine that comes with policing the garage now. Now, there's certainly other ways to do it, but Connor Jones was never going to um, get that from any of the drivers in the truck series. So NASCAR stepping in here and, and doing this, I think, is very much a right move um, uh, on their part. The purists are going to be upset. I'm fascinated to hear what the Myers brothers have to say about this, but Bowman Gray Stadium is getting rid of their guardrail barriers and they will be replaced with concrete walls for the 2025 racing season. Of course, the NASCAR Cup Series will be making uh, a stop there in the first weekend in February, which is still going to be questionable on what the weather is going to be like, but they will be making a stop there uh, for the clash. And NASCAR, of course, wants the Cup Series to race on circuits that are safe. Having guardrail barriers is fun but it's certainly not the safest option uh, out there. Getting rid of those, putting in concrete walls, and apparently we'll also be putting in safer barriers, which will be interesting as well because that's a narrow racetrack as it is, and you're talking about taking away 18 to 24 inches of racing surface there for the safer barriers. It's going to be really tight around that racetrack, and it's already incredibly tight getting around there. I'm sure there's going to be purists that are like, this is why NASCAR is losing thousands of fans. This is why I don't watch NASCAR anymore. I haven't paid attention to NASCAR in years, but this is stupid. So we're technically paying attention, but we won't talk about that side of it. But it's something that needed to be done. Yeah, the guardrails look cool. It has that nostalgia vibe to it, but they are wildly unsafe. If something breaks with that, really bad things can happen uh, when you hit a guardrail. And granted, they haven't had any issues up to this point, which is you know a good thing. But putting a concrete wall in is exceptional exceptionally safer. No, I don't think they're going to have an infield wall section like they had for the clash out at the LA Coliseum. Um, Bowman Gray Stadium is Bowman Gray Stadium, and it deserves to sort of have its football field live with inside of it, um, you know, and drivers be able to drive across if they ever so please. I hope that doesn't happen, uh, though. But that is the madhouse. It does have a certain um, aesthetic to it, and I think that it deserves to remain how it how it currently is without putting a you know wall up around. Plus, that is a football field that a college does use, uh, and it is a natural grass field. So, putting concrete barriers out there on it on the surface not ideal for the grass situation um, as it stands. Neither is driving modifieds across it either. But whatever, that's something that you can't necessarily always control or. You know, you could, but they, they don't because it's the madhouse after all. But having these concrete walls put in, I think, is a net positive at the end of the day here. The facility, when I was there back in the spring, I was blown away by actually how nice it was. Um, yeah, obviously, it's a quarter mile racetrack around a football field um, at Winston-Salem State University. And you don't expect it to be like that good, but like the facilities are nice. Uh, the concession area was nice. The concourse is lovely, like nothing bad to say about it at all. And kind of just upgrading the track at this point in terms of safety isn't a bad thing either. They will also be adding catch fencing around uh, the racetrack as well, which again is a safety aspect because when NASCAR comes to town, 
um, legal team gets involved with that as well. And uh, legal has a lot of thoughts on a lot of things. Um, and basically they look at everything and they're like, we could get sued for that. We could get sued for that. We'll definitely get sued for that if something happens. Uh, so they have to make sure that they cover all their bases here. And that's why you're putting, they're putting in rather, you're not putting in, you're not going down to work manual labor. But if you are and you are watching it, well, you actually did do it. So, uh, but for the most of you, you're not going down and putting in uh, catch fencing. You're not going down and putting in concrete walls. Overall, though, like I said, I'm totally fine with this. Uh, interested to hear what people's thoughts are. So give me your thoughts on Booty Barker out as the crew chief at 2311 Racing for Bubble Wallace. Connor Jones getting suspended for one race and Bowman Gray Stadium getting concrete walls. Like and subscribe to the channel. Follow me on TikTok at Break Hard, Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook at Break Hard Blog.